Hi guys, I'm going to be going over uh, how to sublimate on the Dollar Tree uh, cutting boards. Um, I had lots of questions, so I figured this might be easier. Um, this is the cutting board. It's an 8x8, eight eight, and it's from the Dollar Tree, like I said. It does come with little rubber feet uh, that go on the back. I just peel them off. Most of the people that I make these for don't use them for cutting boards. They use them for just a decoration. So I peel the um, feet off, and you're going to want to work with the slick side, the back side where you peeled off the feet. Not The top side has like little ridges in it, so you want to work from this side. Um, after you peel the um, feet off, you're going to want to either scrape the remaining adhesive off or use an alcohol wipe um, to get the rest of that off and then to wipe the whole back side of the glass before you start. So then I take a piece of 651 vinyl. Um, I just cut it. I have my Cricut cut it in the shape of the cutting board. Um, I just uploaded a picture of one of these. So that way it's got the rounded edges. Um, which actually doesn't matter because I'm about to cut some of this off. <laughs> it tends to be a little bit bigger than, or this is 8x8. Eight eight. This t tends to be a little bit smaller than 8x8, eight eight, so I do have to cut around the edges. So I just take the 651. Um, a lot of people use the wet method to do this, and then you have to leave the uh, vinyl on to dry, and I just don't have that patience. <laughs> so this is how I do it. So you want to peel back just a little bit of your vinyl, and you want to line it up with the top of your cutting board and just stick down that top end. So then you take a scraper. Kind of got it down. There we go. You're going to take a scraper and you're just going to lay it down nice and slow. You're trying to avoid uh, bubbles in your vinyl. So you're going to want to just scrape it as you're peeling the backer sheet back. Just scrape it down. And you're going to have bubbles. There, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Even if you use the wet method, you're 99% of the time you're going to have bubbles. So I'm going to show you uh, how to uh, get rid of the bubbles after the fact. So just keep pulling the backing off and keep scraping it down flat. This one's for me, so I'm not really being too particular, but, um, and then you have your vinyl on your cutting board. Now I do have several bubbles. So what you want to do, if you have a bubble, either take a razor blade or um, a needle or something like that, and you want to just poke a tiny hole in your bubbles. This is not going to be seen. You'll never see it even on vinyl, on any hard substrate. You don't even really see it after this. So you poke your bubbles just a tiny bit, and then you get the air out of them. It comes out through that little... Um, pin stick. So you're going to just want to keep going over it until you feel confident that you've gotten out all the bubbles. If there's a few in here, you're not going to be able to see them. I mean, you're going to have an image on top of this. So, you know, it's not going to screw up your project if you have a few bubbles. Okay, so that's the adhesive applied to the back of your cutting board. So then I turn the cutting board over <clears throat> and then I just trim off any little pieces uh, that are sticking out over. Like I said, I guess the cutting board is probably a little less than eight inches because I always have overhang. So just trim that up. I usually try to line it up where at least I have two sides that it's not hanging over just to make things easier. Let me get that real straight. So now you have the cutting board with the vinyl on the back and you've trimmed uh, the edges of the vinyl. Let me do that one more time. 
after heating, this vinyl kind of shrinks anyway, so if it's close to the edge, you're really not going to be able to tell after the fact. So that part's done. So this is my transfer, my sub-transfer. You're going to want to not mirror it like you would if it was a shirt or if it was going on a shirt. You just print it just like it looks on your screen. So what I do is I design in Cricut Design Space. That's what I'm familiar with. That's what I'm comfortable with. So I actually put an 8x8 eight eight box around my image. So then when I upload it into Creative Studio, which is Saul Grass's um, design program, uh, you'll know exactly what the 8x8 eight eight is. And then when it prints out, I just cut it right along that box. So I, you know, get a good square 8x8 eight eight, um, picture. So what you're going to do is you're going to put this transfer on your desk, table, whatever. You're going to take the cutting board. This is the vinyl side. This is the top of the cutting board. You're going to take it with the vinyl side and you're going to line it up on your sub as best you can. I did one last night that is a little crooked, but it's for my best friend, so we're going to leave it. So you're going to line it up the best you can. And then you're going to take a little piece of heat tape or um, whatever. Here's my heat tape. You're going to take a little piece of heat tape because you can't use regular tape when you're subbing. And you're going to, I know I'm kind of off the screen, but um, you're going to tape your picture to your cutting board. That's just so it doesn't um, move when you lift your heat press. So let me get this up off of here. So I'm going to just take another piece. I just have it off my table so I can get it underneath. And then you're going to wrap it around. So now you have some heat tape on your design. And this is the top of the um, cutting board. So I'm going to move over to the heat press and then I'll come back. Okay, I got you over by my heat press, which you don't really need to see this part with your eyes, I expect. But anyway, a lot of people do better that way. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your tile, your cutting board. This is the top of the cutting board. There's nothing on this. It's just glass except my little pieces of heat tape. This is the side with your sub transfer and then your vinyl attached to the back of your uh, cutting board. So what you're going to do is you're going to put it in your, in your heat press with the glass side up. Not normally like you would have the sub up and your t-shirt down on your press. It's going to be the reverse. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but this is the way it works. So glass side up. So you're going to put it in your press. I have it set to 325. And what we're going to do is heat it three different times for 90 seconds. Um, I just like to check the progress of it, one. And two, um, I like to turn the cutting board every time I open the press. Well, not every time, I'm sorry. This last time, I like to turn it just to make sure that it's getting heat heated um, evenly. So I have a piece of parchment paper on the bottom of my press. Just really, this is so I can turn it easier because this is going to be very hot. Um, I take another piece of parchment paper and lay it over the top. So again, 325, and you're going to press it for 90 seconds. I would say maybe medium pressure. And um, I'm going to let this go, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so it's heated the first time for the 90 seconds. And I'm going to peel this off for a minute. I'm going to lift it up just so you see what's happening. So a little bit of the design is starting to come through. So then I just put it back in. Cover it with your parchment. And then let it go for another 90. And I'll come back. Okay. So we're done with the second 90 seconds. And I'll show you what it looks like. I'm going to get some gloves one day. but So the image is starting to come through. So this last time, I'm going to turn it 180. So now we're going to make sure that all of the 
tile is covered. And not covered, but all of the tile is heated correctly. So put your parchment paper back over it. Put your paper, parchment paper, whatever you use. And then we're gonna press it for one more 90 seconds. Okay, so my tile is out of my press. Um, <clears throat> I did it that last 90 seconds. Now this is the most annoying part of this project. The paper sticks to the vinyl. So what you're gonna have to do is take a water bottle and you're gonna spray the paper. I pulled off as much as I could. And be careful because you can see right here, I pulled a little bit of the vinyl because I started pulling the paper off when this was still hot. So let this cool down before you start peeling the paper. I'll just fill that in with a little bit of white paint. But, so what you're gonna do for this, peel off as much paper as you can get, and then you're gonna get a water bottle, and I use these a lot, the little kitchen scrubbers, and just a rag. You're gonna spray this down, and then you're gonna peel this paper off. I mean, I've never had it affect the picture, but don't get crazy with it. But um, it's probably gonna take several times to get all of it off. Um, I don't know if anybody of you, any of you are familiar with the gel medium transfers, like onto wood, but this is what you have to do for that. Um, after the gel medium dries, the paper, the picture has transferred to the gel medium, and then you have to get the paper off. So you do it the same way with the water and the scrubby. But um, I know that some people have found paper that's more of a um, easy release paper and it doesn't stick to anything. I believe um, one of the papers is uh, from World of Paper. Um, I don't know the brand name, but this is just what I had and I've done several like this and once you get the hang of it, it's not that big of a deal, but I'm going to clean this up and then I'll come back and show you the final project. After I said I'd show you the final project, I decided to kind of let you see how this is working. So I'm going to spray it with the water and then I'm going to take my sponge or my rag and you're just going to, circular motions I find works the best. And you're just gonna get all that paper off your image. I mean, as you can see, I literally just started before I started this um, video. And it's not that hard. It does take some time, but it's not that difficult to get this paper off. So I'm gonna finish it and then I'll come back. Okay, so I am back with the final product. There's my tile really cute because it's glossy because of the glass so here's the side of it Let's see if I can get the color to there we go so you can't really see anything and then here's the back there probably is a little bit more paper on here I could have gotten off but here's the it's not really dry but Here's the paint that I added to those places that uh, peeled the vinyl. But like I said, if you wait for this to cool down, that vinyl should not do that. Um, this is the first one that I've actually had that ever has done that. So um, that is the fin finished product. If y'all have any questions, just let me know and uh, I'll try to answer them as best I can. Thanks, guys.